Hey guys, and welcome to Betwixt the Books. We are doing a Betwixt the Books discuss today because the world is on fire and we've been trying to read the same book for over two months now. <laughs> We're going to try and finish that book before the end of the year because it is for one of our reading challenges like we do every single year. Um, but we don't have the bandwidth to deal with that right now because of everything going on. So. I guess look forward to that next month <laughs> because we're doing this and then we have a reading round table this month. So um, in normal discuss fashion, if you haven't seen this before, it's just going to be Gretchen and I having a conversation back and forth about a topic in the bookish community um, post the American election. Um, there has been a lot of conversation specifically stemming from book talk where people are kind of confused why a lot of book talkers are talking about politics because this is a bookish space and books are for recreation and have nothing to do with politics. So why are we bringing politics into our bookish spaces? Which we have an opinion on. <laughs> um, teensy, teensy, teensy. We're, we're only going to like probably talk for at least 30 minutes if not more on this <laughs> topic uh we have some thoughts um i don't think it's surprising if you watch our channel regularly where we stand on the political spectrum um we're both fairly vocal about that so it should have come an entire series of political science books and president books upon which i opine about specific political science books on specific political topics yeah now i do try to read widely i do think that it is really important to have knowledge of both sides of the argument right so indeed i have featured um books in that series that are written by conservative republicans um and i will explain to you why i disagree with them um, but also, I'm very always curious in these arguments where we overlap, um, because sometimes the difference is not as far as one may think. But uh, yeah, there's like 30 plus of those videos. It's not secret. <laughs> yeah. And um, anyone who watches me knows that I'm queer. So <laughs> that's... That's part of my whole deal. I, I, my existence is inherently political, I guess. Um, how dare I show my face on the internet and talk about that? But, um, yeah. So that's the general idea is that there's people specifically, primarily white women, a lot of like, younger-ish white women i haven't really seen people our age they look more like they're in their like early 20s so like maybe they just haven't been taught this yet like they might still be learning but uh reading in general is political <laughs> like there's no way to get around that um so yeah um any 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 of these books behind me many of them have been challenged or banned across our country. In general, one doesn't ban a book unless there's something inside of it that you don't want other people reading for some reason or another. Generally, political reasons. <laughs> it's, it's, it's generally not a political to have the books behind you. Um, a lot of the conversations that I've seen on Book Talk have been people saying, what what are you reading? <laughs> because the content of the books themselves is often also political. Um, the like joke that I saw somebody make was like that one of these girls did her video and had the Hunger Games right behind her on her shelf, which is an entire book series about a government <laughs> post post dystopian war government and overthrowing said government and also the regime that was attempting to take over the government also being equally bad. <laughs> so, like, the conversation in those books, which presumably one has read and enjoyed, um, is inherently political. 
just the topic itself. And so I think there is like, for me, at least three buckets of things like wrapped up in this like idea that reading is political. First of all, reading is political because many books make political choices yeah. or they are characterized by a lack of a choice. So for example, um, a writer or a book that has an all white cast, but is set in like a city and you're like, mm, interesting. Um Many, many fantasy and sci-fi settings include characters that are often allegories um, for other races or other types of people um, that we know, like when like J.R.R. Tolkien or <laughs> stuff like that, like use some of these things, they were uh, talking about that. Um, Des at one during one reading roundtable was discussing this in um, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so like uh, different spaces, like even if you're like, well, that's fantasy, well, they're often based in real life concepts. So like there's all this in reading. There's also literacy as a political topic. Um, literacy, you know, there were many, many, many years in extremely recent memory in the history of time, right, where women, people of color were not allowed to read, they would be punished for learning how to read. Um, and then like education in general was being denied. Um, and then literacy tests were often applied to things like polls, like being able to vote and being able to become a citizen in order to block those people who hadn't been able to learn how to read from those places. But third, and this is very interesting to me, is that um, being a book talker is political. <laughs> so like if you are have an account where you make choices every day on who you do and you don't platform, and how you talk about them, even if you don't consider it that way, it's one as well. Yeah. Um, and then like top level thing, um, this is someone's social media account and they can do what they want. Okay. <laughs> yes. That was my biggest thing, which was I, I do understand because I am also feeling it, the like social media fatigue of we are constantly being bombarded, especially right now with a lot of like very scary things because what's happening is scary for a lot of people um and i do understand wanting to go to something that is comforting and safe for you and and just wanting to enjoy the escapism of that um but then you go there and there's more of this fear and political talk right um the thing with tiktok is you you can do this all day it's it's gonna feed you an endless supply of videos to scroll past it's not hard to go somewhere else um and it's it's showing that you would be saying to somebody else i don't like what you're saying stop talking when they're talking on their page to their community um no one really has the right to tell someone else like you're making you're making my whole space, the whole book talk space uncomfortable just by talking on, on their own page. Like it's, it, it doesn't make sense. It's not like this one person talking on their own page is feeding the entire book talk community. I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to communicate that. It, like this is their page. They can talk about whatever they want. Yeah. And obviously with the election having just happened, there's going to be a lot of different people talking with a lot about of different feelings that they are going to say on social media because they have a social media presence in some way and they want to say that on their channel. Yeah. So like, yes, I mean this, I, you know, the amount of it likely will fade. Yeah. you know um to be brought back again when there's something new to talk about and there's a whole new but like that's just that's how social media works yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um i feel like you're always kind of like barrage with the thing of the moment for better or for worse and then like the cycle moves on um but yeah no one's making you watch, watch those it. videos yeah um and I have to imagine that, like, yeah, they'll make a video, they'll make several videos, maybe, but they'll go back to book content. Yeah. And um, there's definitely also other people who feel like, hey, I want to be that calm, safe space in this time of chaos. So I'm going to keep 
just talking about my books, or they might talk about books and relate it to the politics in a way that's maybe less scary than just a full out political conversation <laughs> that's happening yeah. on its own. So like there are other there are other places you can go. It, you, it's it's a bit weird asking people why they're being political at this particular time. <laughs> it, 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 the room. <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason there's a reason people are being political right now that it's yeah <laughs> um yeah I, I i i don't know it's it's definitely something that we think about a lot so if you didn't know we i mentioned it at the beginning of this video we have a reading challenge that we do every single year um part of the reason that we do that is that we like to think critically about what we're reading and also to read things that we would not normally pick up just if we were just going by our mood right so yeah. part of those challenges are just fun challenges that are kind of silly and some of those challenges are more so to say hey we're going to step out of our normal comfort zone and pick up something else um whether it's a what did, what have we done this year? A, a nonfiction book that's... Uh... Yeah, we did a social justice nonfiction book challenge. Yeah. Um, and so this is like, you know, one of those things where this is something that I am more likely to read mm -hmm. and Michaela is less likely. And so this also allows us to have a different type of conversation, yep. right? Because I might bring also a certain type of social justice nonfiction book to my individual videos and we choose one together and we talk about it. Um, this one we did end up doing as a reading roundtable, so we actually mm -hmm. did bring different ones, but it ended up being a really, really good and intense discussion mm -hmm. um, about like three very different areas of social justice type of books um, with our friend Emily. And then we have the one that we can't finish is just a full cast audiobook because we both love listening to audiobooks yeah. and full cast audio is super special. And so we wanted to read one of those together. Um, we usually have something about translated fiction. Um, and that is something, again, that we do, first of all, because Michaela loves it, right? <laughs> That's just like one level. Yeah. But it's also like making sure that we are dipping into a different area of publishing um, with some books that, you know, not only one person worked on really hard to write it, but another person worked on really hard to translate it. And um Oftentimes, like there isn't a huge market in translated books too, mm. um, because that process is so time consuming and expensive. So it feels important to us to, you know, in our small way, make sure that we are consuming some of that work and promoting some of that work. Yeah. Um, and even if you don't want to go that far, like I know that a lot of these book talkers who were talking about this are primarily romance readers. Even just in romance, we try to do something like pick an LGBTQIA plus romance, or um, you could you could pick a diverse romance by like a romance written by an African American author, a romance written by an Asian author. Like those exist too to make sure that you're not just reading one particular type of book. Or if you read LGBTQ plus books but you only read um, MM look for a sapphic one see if you can find a sapphic one or one with ace representation like you can always like see if there's one thing that you feel like you haven't read anything before just pick up like that one book this year to push yourself a little bit further um i know other folks have <clears throat> used things like we use the story graph website which compiles for you a bunch of really great data um, and you can use that to say like, wow, I really only read books by women. Like maybe I should pick up a book by a man <laughs> or vice versa. I read only books by men. Maybe I should pick up some books by women. 90% um, of the books that I read are by white authors. Maybe I should reach out and look and see if I can find one from an author of color from various uh, areas. Because yeah. um, I feel like, especially so as someone who like, is saturated in the romance land, right? Well, first of all, it's very easy to only read books about white, straight couples, which yeah. is, to be fair, the bulk of the books that I often review because they are the bulk of the books published. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, um, I've been seeing more like maybe African-American romances, which is great. But, you know, for me, I always have to check myself and I be like, okay, so what does diversity mean? Like, um, I had a book that I reviewed not too, 
too long ago. I think um, that was um, from the um, South Asian diaspora, which is separate from the Asian <laughs> diaspora. Yeah. And like, you know, Japanese, Chinese. Um, I've read, I uh, found one author whose name is escaping me, but um, Lunar Love was one of them, where these beautiful Chinese American romances. Um, and so just like checking in and like, okay, like I've, I've been reading diversely, right? Because I've had diverse characters, but like, okay, what can I go looking for that I maybe haven't represented lately? And of course, like for me, I am limited by the fact that I review primarily ARCs, right? So I can request diversely from Edelweiss, which is the site that I primarily use. But if the publisher does not approve my request, then I am limited to the requests that I have been approved for. So it's not like a foolproof strategy in any way, but like being able to check yourself like that. Um, and also, again, as someone deeply saturated in the romance genre, there are things that happen in a lot of these romance novels that you might not consider political choices, but like really are like life judgments, okay? So for example, the number, like the, the choice a romance author makes to either say like mental health is usually a really big one for me and whether the author decides that this character has mental health issues. And um, the second that this person kisses another person, those mental health issues go away. For me, that is extremely annoying and problematic because anyone with actual mental health issues will tell you that that is not how it works. It is beautiful and supportive and amazing. And it makes you so much stronger to have someone who supports you for sure. I benefit from that astronomically in my mental like health life, having a partner who supports me in all of my things. But like, it's still weird up here, okay? <laughs> So it didn't like go the away? what it didn't go away. Yeah, I know. And I mean, maybe, maybe I just haven't waited long enough, but like some of those romances, they fall in love in four days. And I've been here for like eight years. Maybe you so aren't like, kissing hard enough. You just I, like yeah, have that's, to that's kiss harder. Mash. <laughs> but like that's so much different than a romance novel that makes a choice to actually investigate how this mental health issue works if it's not one that they suffer from themselves you know there are plenty of people who can do their research or have a friend and you know really do that work in a caring way to represent it properly um like that is a big thing i see in romance novels all the time and to me that's like a very that's a political choice and like one that really really frustrates me when it's done poorly because i think it sends a bad message to other people who may not understand how mental health struggles work and then like continue to not understand because they think as soon as you mash lips hard enough you know it's all gonna go away and like that's that's not great sometimes it's hard for you to know what is good representation especially if you are not a member of the group that you are trying to find the representation for so in that case what i would say is try and find somebody who is a member of that group that is recommending books because more often than not they are trying to champion the books from their own minority disability folks are oftentimes looking for that representation and we'll talk about whether it's good or bad representation um folks of color love talking about the books that represent them queer folks like myself you'll hear me talking about queer books all day every day um so if you find people in your communities who are from those communities like if you're looking in the book talk community seek out african-american author or african-american book talkers seek out latinx book talkers seek out queer book talkers disabled book talkers whatever else because even if like on um, at this point in time they haven't done this one video on it at some point in the future you may see a video from them where they say hey this was really great representation for xyz i live with it i felt like it was really representative of me and now you have something that you can add to your own tbr that will help you learn a little bit more because reading is one of the only things that has proven to increase empathy in humans. Specifically reading fiction, um, not, not just anything. But the way that that works is by you reading books with that representation. Um, 
because you get to be literally put into the shoes of somebody with that that disability that representation whatever it is um so it's good for you it's good for them the way capitalism works means that we uh, say we want more of these things with our money so if you want to help these minorities get more books published i think i, I know that we have previously looked at like um i don't remember what newspaper did it but they put out a study of like how many um black specifically books were published in the year and then they showed it post george floyd and pre-george floyd and it like barely grew it was like eight percent or something really small like really ridiculous like how small of traditionally published i should say traditionally published books are out in the world and the only way that more of those will come out is if we buy them because publishing is a business and they're not going to make something if nobody buys it or they'll try and then they'll say, look, nobody bought it. So now I don't need to make any more. Yeah. So also when we think about like the power of something like TikTok too, as something that has clearly had a significant impact on book sales. Now you can say what you want about some of those trends, but like things like, you know, bringing back around also older books, like the Song of Achilles, um, which was, I think, one of the first big ones that I really remember, but it has done that for other older titles as well. And I mean, I don't know if regular people realize like how revolutionary that is. I even did my like my undergraduate thesis on how particularly young adult books are marketed and published and packaged. And um, obviously some of that data is quite out of date, but what certainly hasn't changed is that books go out of print quickly because the cycle moves quickly. And so sometimes even these books that are really, really good and really, really amazing, once the demand for them is gone, they're no longer in print. And that means that we can lose books that are incredible representation literally like one to two years after they've been published. Um, so again, saying book talk is not political is weird when they have had such an impact on like kind of destabilizing the way that book publishers did a lot of their prepackaged marketing and like they're they can create bestsellers on their own right through like marketing and advertising packages and of course only certain authors get that type of money um and it's harder for a smaller like less produced less not less produced less published authors and quite frankly usually the minority you know authors that are down there um to break through and tiktok has like but over everything else, it seems, been able to do that. So, um, you know, it, there is so much power there to to change what people are and aren't reading, the number of independently published books that have gotten picked up by a traditional publisher because they went viral on TikTok. Like, like that is, that is li that's literally political power right there on display. And it's literally life-changing for those authors. Um, so, like... If you if you feel like you don't have a voice, you definitely do. Um, like any of those authors can like stand up and attest to the way that their life has changed, usually by just one person making a video about it that hit everybody. Well, and wasn't it the one person who made the tweet too about um how this is how you lose the time war? Yes, yeah, and it was and a silly it tweet. Went... <sighs> yep. Which I read it before the tweet. It was great then. Still great. <laughs> I get to put my little hipster hat on. Right, your little hipster hat. <laughs> I read it before it was cool. Um, but yeah, that's just because that, that's from a genre. <laughs> I read quite a lot, which is short sci-fi um, in general anyway. But yes. So like you, you have a lot of power that you don't realize that you have. Um, and again, we aren't asking you to like, only read diverse books like nobody is asking you to like drop all of your favorite authors and and only read diverse books but maybe see if you can add like one extra book in there that you wouldn't normally read um if you want some resources for like reading challenges in the way that we do obviously we do one every single year that has like 10-ish challenges so you can follow ours on Storygraph. Um, we also really like specifically the Pop Sugar reading challenge. Pop Sugar puts out one that's like 20-something 
50 something yeah i mean like with the extras i think it's like 50 yeah it's like a it's ridiculous like it is, it's a wild number. number um and they're really good about having a good mix of like diversity picks and also like fun challenges that are just kind of like silly and interesting um so you can still really find a, a way for those challenges to like work with your already like favorite genres um because it'll be like a book that's blue like any book that's blue like it doesn't matter like it's there um so yeah I, we really recommend those um generally from what i can see um a lot of the celebrity book clubs do a, a pretty okay job of like having some diversity rotated in there um not all of them but like a good amount of them have a, like a a, a good number of diverse picks so if you trust them more than you trust us that's another place to look um i don't work there anymore but barnes and noble does like a really good job of making sure that their monthly picks have diversity in them whether it be lgbtq stuff or authors of color um they're pretty good about making sure that a good number of their picks are diverse in some way so just going into your local barnes and noble and looking at their tables they're like new release paperback tables they'll usually have those available to you and they're usually buy one get one half off so if you could save some money that way too just pick up something that is interesting to you and then pick up a diverse book for half off also we recognize that for a lot of people you do not have a lot of disposable income so the idea of saying put your money where your mouth is is really hard Mm -hmm. um and so please do realize that you can make your local library put that money where their mouth is for you <laughs> um so you can do that by requesting books um checking books out obviously high circulation numbers keep books on shelves and so we talk about books disappearing from publishing like after one or two years that book may continue to exist on a library bookshelf for as long as it is being checked out right um, because um, when librarians do their process, which is called weeding, to make room on the shelf for new books, the things that go are the ones that nobody wants. Um, and if your library does not already have the book that you are looking for, I know for a fact that when I looked there, we were all on the lookout for books that were getting heavily requested um, so that if we did not already have a copy, if we saw, oh my gosh, like, you know, a couple of people have requested this book, um, we would go and buy it you know, to make sure that our patrons had easy access to their own copy. Um, and in some cases in a library, like it's not like, you know, even five people requesting the same book, you just kind of notice that you have a couple, even two of the same book on the shelf. And you're like, oh, well, clearly there is like an interest in the area in this book. Um, so they will go out of their budget um, as much as they have and can um, to either put that book physically on the shelves or to put that book on um, Libby um, either as an audiobook or as a ebook. Um, so don't think that, like, you know, you have no money to spend. You can just um, promote these things with your own actions at places like your local library. Might be worthwhile. But yeah, um, reading in general is political. Um, some of us just existing is political. <laughs> so if we appreciate people supporting our ability to exist um especially going forward because for some of us the reason that we are so scared is that our existence comes into question and if you don't have to worry about that that's awesome i'm uh, it's great for you but like some of us do have to worry about it um so be aware when you're saying things like keep politics out of my face i just want to see people talking about books um we don't have the luxury of not thinking about it well i don't think i can add anything better to what michaela just said um so i am going to do um my advertising shtick i guess which is what i'm here for at the end um, so we are going to be putting out a um, reading roundtable in a couple of weeks. This is a wonderful unthemed episode. Um, unthemed technically means unhinged. We just don't know where it's going because um, we don't share our books ahead of time. Um, so people uh, will have brought whatever. And this is the first time we're hearing about it. And we have um, as our two guests, one returning face and one new face. 
um, as we continue to expand our reading roundtable family that we're really exciting about bringing all this new energy in. Um, will Michaela and I finish this uh, full cast audiobook for December? Um, please, God, because we we are genuinely so close. <laughs> And yet so far. So we are really hoping to bring this book to you as our Betwixt content for um, December. And then we will finish out the year with a final reading roundtable, which will be um, with some returning friends and a theme. We're all going to read a book that has been um, shortlisted for an award. Which award? No idea. Um, again, that's where the chaos monkeys come in. Yeah. But, we want to give um, people options. They can they yeah. can pick whichever one they want. You want to do the Caldecott? Go for it. I mean, I might because I again haven't actually. I have. I literally have not read a romance novel in like going on three months, which is a frightening, frightening time in my brain. But like that's how like the world has been. You can um, do so, the Goodreads Choice Awards when those shortlists come out. You can do the romance category. Goodreads Choice Awards. Pick one of those. No. You don't have to. No. <laughs> then don't. No. All right. Well, we'll see. You'll have to tune in to see what does happen. Will I bring picture books? Nobody knows. Um, but and then we will start in 2025, um, probably with our wrap up, which we usually do in January for the year. Um, where we check in on how much or how little of our buddy reading challenge we've completed. And we tell you how many of those challenges we have to roll over into the next year. Look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> As always, alert, we, guys, never we never finish them. We never finish them. <laughs> we've never. We, and logic would suggest stop choosing 10. No. And we never have. No. So anyway. Um, as of whatever you do, just keep reading. If reading isn't your thing and you like, you know, podcasts or audiobooks, remember all of that is like learning. Mm -hmm. And we all become better people when we learn something new. And we can, you know, help share that and do more in the world with it. Even if it's silly trivia, guys, just keep learning. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>